got a bad conclusion there. Then they tell the kids, we have evidence from development. Now this one makes me angry. So I'm going to try to stay calm while we talk about this is probably one of the most dangerous lies in the textbooks. So just calm down now. Okay, I'm ready. This textbook says, The similarity between the early stages of development of many different animals helped convince Darwin that all forms of life shared common ancestors. Darwin considered this the strongest class of facts in favor of his theory. This was the best evidence Darwin knew of for his theory. The guy who made up this dumb idea is named Ernst Haeckel. Haeckel called this idea we're about to share with you the biogenetic law, which means as animals develop inside the mother, they go through the stages of evolution. All you got to do is memorize the word farm, F-A-R-M, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. That's the way they say it happened. The phrase they had for it back then was ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Wow, what's all that mean? Well, ontogeny is the growth of the baby. It goes through stages, okay? Recapitulates means it reenacts or does over again. Phylogeny is the evolutionary sequence. This Irish textbook says, The presence of fish-like structures in embryos of different species shows these animals have evolved from fish and share the basic pattern of fish development. It's as if the embryo retains a memory of its origins and starts to copy them during its development. That's the ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Now the idea that sick mind Freud relied on was the idea that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, that is, the development of the individual recapitulates the evolution of the entire species. This is stupid and dangerous. They tell the kids the embryo, the baby growing in the mother, has gills like a fish. Gills? That's a lie. Those are not gill slits. Those little folds of skin you see on the embryo grow into bones in the ear and glands in the throat. They never have anything to do with breathing. My uncle had five or six chins and he couldn't breathe through any of them but the top one. Okay? <laughs> Those are not gill slits. Ernst Haeckel said the turning point in his thinking was when he read Darwin's book in 1860. See, Darwin's book was printed in English in 1859. The next year it was printed in German, 1860. Haeckel was a German embryology professor. He read the book and said, wow, what a great theory. If only we had some evidence. Well, nine years later, they still had no evidence. So Haeckel decided to help out. He was going to make some evidence. Haeckel took a drawing of a dog and a human embryo. He was an embryology professor, you know. And he lied. He faked the drawings. He changed them and made them look exactly alike to prove they're related. He just is a bald-faced lie, okay? Haeckel made giant posters of his fake drawings and traveled all over Germany and converted the people to believing in evolution. Which led to the next obvious question, hey, if evolution is true, I wonder which uh, race of humans have evolved the farthest. And guess who the Germans thought it was? Huh, yeah, we'll talk more about that later. Now on top are Haeckel's fake drawings. Underneath are the actual photographs of these animals. He lied. His own university held a trial and convicted him of fraud. He said at the trial, I should feel utterly condemned were it not that hundreds of the best observers and biologists lie under the same charge. This biogenetic law is as dead as a doornail. It's not true. But it can't be taken out of the textbooks for some reason. It's been proven wrong since 1875, and they still keep it in the books. It's still used in this book, Evolutionary Analysis, College Textbook, 1998 edition, used at University of West Florida, the exact same chart of Ernst Haeckel. That's only been proven wrong since 1875. Okay, I know it takes a while to get textbooks up to date, but uh, that's long enough. I think 130 years, they ought to be able to get it out by now, don't you think? Okay, More about the gill slits in uh, this book here, Icons of Evolution. Darwin's theory, his book came out 1859. He predicted they would find evidence. 1869, Haeckel faked the drawings. 1875, it was proven wrong. But it's still in textbooks used all over the planet. 2004 textbook, still has it. 2005 textbook, and I pronounced it wrong as Chickasha, not Chickasha, Chickasha, Oklahoma. I got corrected during the break. Uh, still teaching the baby has gill pouches. Notice, for example, gill pouches, okay? Gill slits on the embryo. They're teaching this in textbooks all over the world. It's only been proven wrong since 1875. Get it out of the book. 
Tear the page out. I mean, it's, not, it's a no-brainer. Tear out the page. It's not true. There's a junior high textbook telling them it has uh, embryo, has gill slits. This one says, similarly, humans and fish embryos resemble each other because humans and fish share a common ancestor. Three, these similarities provide evidence that these three animals evolved from a common ancestor, tiny gill slits. Gill slits on the human embryo. Gills of fish. Tiny gill pouches used in college textbooks. There's a 2004 textbook saying it has evidence of evolution is seen in uh, development of embryos. You can't get a high score on SAT or ACT tests unless you lie and say the baby has gill pouches. It's found on every single test we could find. If you don't believe in evolution, you won't score high to get into college or at least give the evolution answer. Why would they keep this in the textbooks? 130 years after it is proven wrong. Oh, there's only one answer I can come up with. I'll tell you in a minute. This one shows a five to six week embryo and it says by seven months the fetus looks from the outside like a tiny normal baby, but it's not. <laughs> it's not a baby at seven months. Hello, that's a lie. It's a human at conception. 